to invite the uh, minister. Um, no minister can tell me what to invite you to do the best briefing to the nation. Thank you so much, Director. Thank you. And let me start by acknowledging your presence, uh, representing the two permanent secretaries of the ministry. Uh, I also acknowledge the few ministry government officials with us here and uh, distinguished colleagues from the press. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you to the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, for this short briefing. And um, at the end of the short briefing, I'll be available to uh, respond to your points of clarification and indeed a few questions that you may wish to pose to, uh, to me. I want to start by just expressing uh, the, uh, our displeasure as Minister of Home Affairs on the manner in which uh, members of the United Party for National Development, UPND, are reacting following the summoning of their leader, Mr. Gainde Jirema, to appear at the police headquarters for questioning. Dear colleagues from the press, Government is aware of the mobilization by a few UPND supporters currently taking place in some provinces and their intention uh, through this mobilization is to cause chaos and instability in the country. It is a well-known fact that this agenda is being organized by a few known individuals with a view to obstruct police investigations and subsequently stand in the way of justice. Zambia is a democratic country with a governance system premised on the rule of law. Every individual suspected to have committed a crime should be answerable to the law enforcement institutions without any interference. We all know that uh, in our country, no one is above the law. And the law enforcement organizations should be respected by all citizens. And certainly, political violence shall never be entertained to influence the course of justice in this country. So, dear colleagues from the media, the appearance of political leaders before the police and other law enforcement agencies such as the Anti-Corruption Commission, Drug Enforcement Commission, and others is not a new phenomenon in Zambia. And it's not only happening during the reign of my government because this has happened before during the reign of the previous government. You will recall that the former Republican president, Dr. Frederick Chilua, may so rest in peace, appeared before the courts of law for a prolonged period of time. No one obstructed the investigations and the court proceedings until the outcome of the court cases were determined by our competent courts. Some of our serving ministers have appeared before the Anti-Corruption Commission and their cases were heard in the courts of law. No supporters were entertained to protect 
the ministers from appearing before the courts of law to allow the wheels of justice to prove the allegations leveled against them. Other former cabinet ministers are still appearing before the courts of law on various charges and no one is allowed to interfere with the court proceedings. There is no one who is going to intimidate the police for them to fail to execute the professional mandate assigned to them by the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. I will repeat, no one is going to intimidate the police for them to fail to execute the professional mandate assigned to them by the constitution of the Republic of Zambia. And so government is going to do everything possible to ensure that the police service is supported to enforce the law without fear or favor. This is the only way that citizens will be guaranteed of protection and safety by its government. Dear colleagues from the press, let me also seize this opportunity to caution our members of the public as we enter Christmas period. The police service are directed to work closely with the Road Transport and Safety Agents, RTSA, in providing joint motorized pat patrols across the country. This is to ensure that the traveling public are protected from accidents that can be avoided. All motorists, uh, all motorists are warned from overspeeding due to improved road infrastructure across the country and also cautioned to avoid drunk and driving, which is the main cause of the most traffic accidents during such festivals. And we have recorded a large number of lives that have been lost out of these accidents. In a similar manner, members of the public are warned from gathering in large numbers during Christmas festival to avert the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Cases of coronavirus have been recorded to be on the increase in other countries, and this should be used as a warning to all of us to adhere to health regressions. Let's continue observing social distancing, avoid unnecessary movements, washing our hands with soap and clean water, and always face masking, because it would appear now we have dropped guard and people are just moving about. But we heard from the minister responsible for health that there are new cases that have been recorded. And so the Minister of Home Affairs during this period shall work in collaboration with the Minister of Health to ensure that regulations meant to avert the spread of COVID-19 are enforced. Joint foot patrols between the police, Zambia police, the local authority, and the Minister of Health shall be conducted indiscriminately. I wish you, our colleagues from the media and the entire public, a happy Christmas and a prosperous 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Madam Minister. It's now time for you to ask questions or clarifications why you are not here. Tell us your name and the media house where you are coming from. Time for questions. Yes. In line with uh, what you've said, your name and the that, media house where you are coming from. I'm Simon Mundemba from the Daily Nation. Um, we saw some PF uh, supporters in southern province that were um, attacked by the 
UPND in, uh, for putting on a PF regalia. What is it that your minister is doing to ensure that the people that are not supporting UPND, that you're doing that, they are, that they are protected in that province? Another question? I, I want to get your, your name, name. Um, name. Patrick Soko. <coughs> Patrick Soko from Kamnit uh, TV. Uh, I, I want to get uh, uh, the, the position of the minister regarding uh, lawlessness that has been taking place in Chawama constituency, especially at the bus stop area, where there's even a, a, a street called Katondo being uh, uh, supported by people claiming to be your members. So I wanted to find out what action is being taken regarding that. So is it our bus stop? Yes. Another person? Yes, please. Good morning once again, Honorable Minister. My name is Isaac Sonika from Pan African Radio. Uh, I have two questions that are a bit away from the, the issues we've addressed this morning. First of which is on uh, MMD President uh, Nevers Mumba's arrest in the Congo. I'd like to find out from you, as uh, Minister of Home Affairs, which ministry supersedes the Department of Immigration. Is there a particular procedure that uh, opposition leaders or politicians of such 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 nature uh, have to go through when they travel to other countries? And then the other issue is on um, the UPND social media card by the name of Larry Mweto, who was uh, deported from uh, Livingstone to Botswana. Uh, now, I'm, I'm made to understand that uh, we have issues of uh, dual citizenship in Zambia now, so it, it, it's become, it, it, it's looking a little bit odd, and people are wondering why is he sent back to, why is he deported? when Zambia is, is uh, consent to issues of dual citizenship. <coughs> yes, my question, Honorable Minister, my name is Anot Kasama from ZNBC. My question hinges on uh, the escalating levels of political violence. Um, as we draw towards uh, the 2021 election, what measures is government in line with the police uh, service putting in place to ensure that we quell possible violence during the elections? We may first allow the Honourable Minister to attend to the four questions. Thereafter, then we still give you back the chance to ask some more questions. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Honourable Sim or Comrade Simon uh, from Daily Nation, we asked about the, the, um, the members of Party Front who are alleged to have been attacked for putting on. Um, uh, political regalia. First of all, um, for democracy to thrive, we must have a safe environment everywhere. And this safe environment is not only supposed to be guaranteed by the law enforcement agencies in, uh, um, as in the police service. Us as citizens, first of all, must be the ones to embrace peace and appreciate the spirit of coexistence because it's the the the, the multi-party politics that we have embraced entails that if you are a political party to run the affairs of the country you must have presence in all the ten provinces that's what we have chosen for ourselves now if you want to think you can only be in one province as a political party or supporters of a particular political party and you don't want to impress others, you also will need to be present in other provinces. The danger of those attacks in uh, Monze, southern province, on political party uh, cadres is that what will happen to cadres belonging to this party where the attackers of these PF members will be 
if in the in the areas where they may not be strong so to the citizens it's important that we understand that aspect first because that action can trigger other reciprocal actions which will culminate into a full scale violence and that's what we don't want to see so it's important that our citizens are sensitized on the need to coexist however the police have picked up that matter and investigations have been instituted to ensure that the perpetrators of that violence are brought to book so that we avoid this situation that i'm uh, alluding to which will make other members start reacting in the same way which shouldn't be the case because we are a multi-party participatory democracy now and we must allow parties to exist in all the corners of this country. So the police are looking into that matter, but it's important that you, our colleagues from the media, also find a way of helping uh, in uh, sensitizing our people to uh, appreciate coexistence. Patrick Soko, you talked about the lawlessness in Chawama and uh, happening at a bus stop where people are supposed to uh, board and disembark from the buses going to different areas peacefully and so we have taken note of that and uh, police have been uh, informed we had a meeting with the leadership in Chawama constituency and the district of, uh, from the Patriot Front to find out who was behind that lawlessness which seems to be taking place in Chawama. But I want to assure you and through you, the people of Chawama, that very soon, sanity will be restored and the order will be restored in Chawama constituency. Thank you very much. Um, Isaac um, Sansonika, you were asking about the arrest of um, uh, Dr. Nevas Mumba in the DRC. Very regrettable development indeed. Um, and um, we as government obviously were concerned when we received that report and I think frantic efforts were made through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to ensure that uh, we, the, the government got to know what was happening to Dr. Nevers Mumba. But ideally, uh, a person of that status, uh, Dr. Nevers Mumba, is not just an ordinary uh, political leader. He is a former Republican vice president. And so he still has that status. And so it's just befitting for him to ensure that when he's exiting the nation, he makes formal, formal uh, uh, notifications to the Minister of Foreign Affairs so that the necessary protocols and courtesies are accorded to him wherever he's going. That cannot be facilitated if there is prior engagement and so that the missions are in those countries where he's going are informed and they know how to look after a, a man of that status. Now, there are so many questions that have been raised. And of course, he himself has confirmed to you, the media, um, uh, this, what transpired to him and the, uh, how he was... Um, uh, how he ended up in the hands of the, role, the, the, the security wings of the DRC. Our advice is that um, uh, it will be uh, important that Dr. Nevers Mumba turns down on commenting on these matters uh, because we have got four more channels of communication between the government of Zambia and the DRC. We have what we call a joint permanent commission on both politics, defense, and security, where we exchange information. And so through those channels, we are still uh, in consultations. And the, even Dr. Mumba's fate back home uh, will depend so much on the information that will come from the DRC, because the allegations that were leveled against him are serious allegations serious allegations that may have a security impact on Zambia and DRC. And mind you, we enjoy a cordial relationship, a cordial 
bilateral relationship between Zambia and the DRC. So we cannot allow those um, relations to be soured uh, by just acts of one individual. So for now, it's important that uh, um, uh, everybody remains calm uh, until such a time when consultations will be exhausted through the formal channels. It will be premature for me to make detailed comments on that uh, predicament that Dr. Nevers Mumba found himself in. But it's a matter of interest, especially for us from the security cluster. We uh, certainly need to know exactly what transpired, what the reasons were um, uh, for that kind of uh, uh, reaction from the, the, the DRC. So I did, I've already spoken to the, the procedure that is required um, of um, the people of high standing coming out of this country going elsewhere and the need for them to uh, make formal notification to the Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, who then should ensure that uh, their movement is facilitated uh, in the foreign countries. The other question was about uh, Mr. Rari Mwitwa, who is claiming to be deported. The correct position is that he was not deported. Deportation is done under this minister's hand. In short, a warrant of deportation for any foreign national who is undesirable in this country is signed by the Minister of Home Affairs. So the minister doesn't remember signing any such a warrant. And I want to also make it clear that um, uh, as minister, I don't micromanage the operations of my agencies. Even as we sit here, there are so many people coming in and out of the country in various borders, various borders, airports, who are arriving different times. So our immigration department and the others in security wings that are present at borders have got a duty to play. So they determine who should come in and who should not come in. And so the gentleman, um, of course, was denied entry. Probably that could be the right term. He was denied entry into the country for reasons um, known by the security wings um, uh, which, and I'm told this gentleman was coming in as a British national and it must be understood that he, whether he's got roots in Zambia, the fact that he's a British national, he's a British national and he was traveling on a British passport so the authorities at the, 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 the entry point were dealing with a British national and that's how it was. But on one hand, as Minister of Home Affairs, I'm aware uh, that uh, this gentleman, um, uh, uh, through the police, it would, we would have loved him to come because uh, we have citizens who have got uh, complaints against this individual, bordering on criminality. And uh, um, I only got to know about some of these complaints because some of the complainants, uh, one of the complainants is a member of parliament uh, for Dundumwezi, or Simombe, who has swindled money by this individual and, and, and other people. And the complaint was at uh, police, uh, Matero police station. So if I was asked, maybe I would have loved him to come so that these people could have uh, 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 had time to, to interact with him. And I was surprised to see in the media that he was coming to participate in voter mobilization. That's uh, not permissible. He's a British national. And even no foreigner is allowed to participate in local uh, activities of such nature. So let's not do things out of ignorance. And you spoke to the aspect of dual citizenship. Dual citizenship is a process and it must be conferred through the procedures. 
So you don't do you don't do, you don't exercise dual citizenship on on assumption. It doesn't work. So if you're a British national who wants to enjoy the Zambian citizenship, you must apply. And the due process will be followed. And I'm speaking to you because I sit um, to chair the citizenship board. And we have processed a number of cases from the United Kingdom. Some of them, distillation of citizenship for those of our citizens who could have lost citizenship under the old um, uh, uh, under the old act and the constitution which didn't provide for dual citizenship and we don't i don't remember this gentleman appearing on any of those lists of british nationals who have applied for dual citizenship so he doesn't enjoy that status and so if he was coming here to engage in politics it's an illegality and he can be arrested and prosecuted so, if it is the wish to acquire the dual citizenship status, you must apply following the laid down procedures. And you can go to the mission in the United Kingdom where you will be given the procedures to follow in order for him to apply for dual citizenship. So, as far as I am concerned, he was a British national who was denied entry. And maybe probably the, the issues have alluded to which are still pending, in which he needs to uh, come back and clear, uh, uh, could be the reasons. But I, I don't have details uh, um, uh, as to reason why they denied him entry, because that's what they do on a daily basis. Mr. Kasama, you posed the question on the issue of uh, political violence. I did mention in one of my responses that um, democracy cannot thrive where there is peace, not as a catalyst, but as a prerequisite. So the peaceful environment is a prerequisite for democracy. And so we as a ministry responsible for maintaining law and order are doing everything possible to ensure that our law enforcement agencies, the police service, is ready to police the forthcoming general elections. Some of the measures include um, in-service training in order to freshen up our officers and capacitate them, uh, those that are already serving. Um, are being subjected to in-service training programs uh, in all the three training schools. We are also looking at the possibility of uh, beefing up the numbers um, uh, should resources permit in order to have a reasonable number of officers to, uh, to, to police the general elections so that our people are given an opportunity to register and vote peacefully, which they, they've done. And I must commend the collaboration between the police service and other institutions uh, working with the Electoral Commission of Zambia by ensuring that the, the, there were very few incidents of uh, violence that were reported during the, the, the registration process, uh, despite uh, the acts of uh, non patriotic Zambians who we have seen going to parade children and you know coach them to say things which children uh, are, are tutored uh, some are given the audacity to cross borders uh, to go at the border between Zambia and the Republic of Malawi to parade people there and, and make them uh, make uh, utterances that were uh, bordering on criminality and some of the culprits are being pursued in order to uh, probe such matters. Others have been parading young children and uh, you know, give them NRCs belonging to other people as a way of discrediting uh, government processes of identifying citizens and conferring citizenship on, on their people. Such culprits won't be tolerated. They will be pursued and uh, made to face the full wrath 
of the law. So we are doing everything possible to ensure that uh, 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 elections are held in a peaceful environment, just like the ones that we have had before. These are not the first elections we are going to have, neither are they going to be the last. So it's important that we continue um, um, uh, being a peaceful nation we have known be, to be. And we are not going to allow a few disgruntled elements to uh, uh, disturb this peace that we enjoy. As a ministry, we look after um, what we call people of concern, refugees that have run away from other countries to come and search for sanctuary here in this country. We wouldn't want our people, Zambian people, to find themselves elsewhere as refugees because peace has escaped. So that's a responsibility that uh, His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, is committed to, and uh, those of us who are serving under him have got an obligation to uh, ensure that uh, this country remains a peaceful country uh, for the generations to come. Do we still have some more questions? Yeah, Any more questions? Maybe just one uh, away from this. Um, I read on social media where this uh, former PF uh, Kada American is being pursued. Uh, what is the status? Which one? American. American something. Uh, <laughs> Look, um, I think the political parties are clubs where members um, uh, join willingly, but members have an obligation to follow the rules that are set out in any particular political party. The party PF has got rules. Those who exit the party and want to come back, they have to follow the procedures that are laid down. So anyone who claims to be a member of Patriot Front must be a law-abiding citizen. Must be a law-abiding citizen. So you are not going to engage in lawlessness and use the party to shield you. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You heard me say no one is above the law. People have been prosecuted and people have been sent to the correctional facilities. And when that is happening, no one looks at the, what political jacket you put on. So for any member who wants to be a member of PF, must be a law-abiding citizen. Because we won't tolerate any individual to break the law and use the party as a shield. No. That's why I was saying, even as much as we don't feel happy as, as government, the, the president doesn't take pressure in seeing his own cabinet ministers being uh, taken to the law enforcement agency and later on to the courts of law. But he's one person who has said, look, if there are allegations leveled against an individual, it's important that through the institutions that are established, these people are given chance to, uh, uh, to be cleared or to be convicted of those allegations. The reason why he does that is to ensure that everybody understands that we are here to save within the confines of the law. The authority that is deposited in us must not be abused. And so it goes down to the, each member, each member, if senior members of the party can make, be made to account for their actions, why shouldn't be an ordinary member be made to account? So that's my response. If you want to claim to be a member of Patriot Front, you must respect the institutions of the party. You must respect the leadership of the party across board. You can't just say, no, me, I only respect this, this one. It doesn't work. It's a family where rules must be observed. So we are not going to tolerate indiscipline. And those that break the law, the law enforcement, are encouraged to act and act decisively without looking at this political status. You have seen a number of people that have uh, done wrong things and have been made, uh, made to, to account. And the party has acted. A recent case of uh, a former provincial chairman who uh, 
misconducted himself at the police station, was meant to go to the courts of law. And the party acted by suspending to say we are not in encouraging illegalities. That's how this is going to be in the party. So uh, that's my response to, to your question, Mr. Kasama. We want to also create an environment where as you, the media, are able to freely discharge your functions. When people have appeared in the radio stations, it's interactions. People must be mindful of the language they are using, even those that are hosting them, so that the language is not offensive to attract negative reactions which can culminate into physical confrontation. But that also is not justifiable. If someone says something that you don't believe in, you don't react by being physical. You can also use the same platform to counter what anybody could have been saying, which you feel is not correct. So it's important that the violence that we're talking about is dealt with in all the fronts so that every Zambian is able to exercise their freedoms, uh, fundamental freedoms that they, they, they are supposed to enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister. You have uh, answered all the questions adequately. Uh, allow me just to thank my colleagues from the media for coming at a short notice. The ministry still look forward to working with you in 2021, and you should enjoy the Merry Christmas ahead of us. I also just want to end by wishing all of you um, a, a peaceful Merry Christmas and obviously a prosperous 2021 at personal level and at family level. You are busy just like all of us, but please find time to be with your family, as, uh, even in short time. Uh, let the family appreciate you. Uh, don't say, no, I'm going for an assignment all the time. Uh, you are following the Minister of Home Affairs, but you are welcome to come to the village in Shwangand where we, 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 we shall be spending Christmas. But just to wish you all the very best uh, through this festival period. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.